Hello, my name is Lucas, this is Bit of Lit, and it is day 14 of Vlogmas, and I would like to talk about three books that I borrowed from work that are, uh, that I picked up on a different day from the Joseph Campbell books, um, that I showed yesterday. Um, I will get to these books sooner than those, so I will read, uh, you know, I will finish these books before I finish those at least. I'll read a little bit here and there of uh, of those as time goes on, but not too much so I can digest it. Um, anyway, I am a third of the way through Moonfleet, uh, which I will read the cover, the back, I mean, uh, and talk about it. Fifteen-year-old uh, John, fifteen-year-old uh, orphan John Trenchard lives with his aunt in the fishing village of Moonfleet, where each night the legendary ghost of Colonel Blackbeard Mohoon is said to roam and smugglers carry out their illicit works. When John accidentally gets involved in the smuggling trade, he falls into dangerous company and a terrifying world of betrayal and revenge. Forced to flee England, John has no idea of the adventures and trials he will face or if he will ever see Moonfleet again. Sounds pretty interesting. It was on my work. It was on my work at desk. It was on my desk at work for a long time and I ignored it. Uh, somebody was supposed to write a review about it, and I think they thought that I would do it, maybe, uh, because I had been reading too many Stephen King books to win the reading race at work, and, um, yeah, anyway, I finally decided, why not pick it up? Um, and, yeah, I'm a third of the way through. It's fine. It's kind of like an adventure novel but so far, there's not really been any adventure. I'm assuming, uh, based on you know the description in the back, I'm just a step away, a chapter or two away from the actual adventure part. But uh, right now, I'm still waiting for... I mean, things have happened, but... You know, there's this uh, sort of inn the, called the Why Not, which is... Uh, play uh, the two words why not uh, play on the owner's name or something with the letter Y in it and uh, you know because it sort of forks one side leads sort sort of down to a bad path and the other side leads to a good path of, you know on your personality or whatever and you must choose and I suppose the boy has been making choices and will have to make choices uh, soon enough, definitely. And uh, there's that for that bit of symbolism. But right now, uh, it's fine. Uh, I'm not, not really hugely into it, but I will keep reading. Uh, and then I have watched the movie of Howl's Moving Castle, but now I can read... Uh, Diana Wynne Jones's uh, literary efforts uh, that the movie is based on. And let's read the back of it, shall we? Sophie has the great misfortune of being the eldest of three daughters, destined to fail miserably should she ever leave home to seek her fate. But when she unwittingly attracts the ire of the Witch of the Waste, Sophie finds herself under a horrid spell that transforms her into an old lady. Her only chance at breaking it lies in the ever-moving castle in the hills, the wizard Howell's castle. To untangle the enchantment, Sophie must handle the heartless Howell, strike a bargain with a fire demon, and meet the Witch of the Waste head-on. Along the way, she discovers that there is far more to Howell and herself than first meets the eye. So yeah, this looks kind of like what it looks like in the movie. Very interested. I really liked the movie when I watched it 10 years ago, <laughs> something like that. And yeah, that's all I can say. Looking forward to it. Uh, I've heard that there are some serious liberties taken with some themes. I'm not entirely sure what, but there it is. I will be reading this soon. And we also happen to have the sequel. House of Many Ways, uh, which seems to follow a different character based on the back. 
When Charmaine Baker agreed to look after her great uncle's house, she thought she was getting blissful, parent-free time to read. Sounds nice. She didn't realize that the house bent space and time, and she did not expect to become responsible for an extremely magical stray dog and a muddled young apprentice wizard. Now somehow, she's been targeted by a terrifying creature called the Lubbock too and become central to the king's urgent search for the fabled elf gift that will save the country. The king is so desperate to find the elf gift, he's called in an intimidating sorceress named Sophie to help. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, what? And where Sophie is, the great wizard Howl and fire demon Calcifer won't be far behind. How did respectable Charmaine end up in such a mess, and how will she get herself out of it? You know what? I want to know because I'm very curious based on what I know about the movie that I remember, which is faint images here and there. What? What kind of trouble is she going to get into? I don't know. Um, I love the idea. I love the idea uh, these kind of I know they're, I guess, young adult books, but uh, I like these fantasy kind of books that are just sort of very strange uh, about that curse that turns her into an old lady and a moving castle. These are very interesting, cool things to me. And a fire demon that's like a little fire drop, uh, at least in the movie. Um, very cool. It's very comfortable in a way. It's like safe, nice there's some darkness and danger but not too much kind of fantasy I need that right now I don't need craziness okay uh, anyway that's that thank you goodbye